raised more in resurrection. You can go back to some of the first sermons you ever preached. You'll find things. Well, I didn't know that was in here. Didn't know I put that there. It's always that way. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Oh, my. I had a friend. He was uh, grew up the only person in the family. What church was his grandmother? And she was a Pentecostal. And he uh, uh, he said, I was eight years old, only one that she could make go, so I had to go. And said, I thought that old preacher where we went was 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 crazy. Said we'd go in there and start ten o'clock in the morning. Long about three o'clock in the afternoon he'd say, Ain't we having a time this morning? <laughs> but you know you get in church, you get that Holy Ghost moving, it don't matter about that time. Amen. Said one time <clears throat> his grandmother wasn't looking so he slipped out. Said there's a man in a taxi out there, taxi cab, and he said to him, Hey boy, is that preacher through? He said, Yeah, but he hadn't quit. I know about that too. <laughs> you got to know when to start, when to stop along this line. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Revelation chapter 12, and verse 11. Our lesson protected by the blood. Oh my, what a wonderful thought. Here we saw how it purges, how it cleanses. We saw how it feeds the cells. We saw how it keeps the temperature. We, we just how this blood functions and operates. Oh, what a gospel this is. Amen. I said, what a gospel this is. If I just stay right with God, everything else is working. All he asks me to do is abide in him. If you abide in me and my word in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done. That, that's always been the word of God. That's been an outstanding scripture to me for 59 years. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, then you can ask of me what you will, and it will be done. Hallelujah. Oh, my. We read in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, in Revelation 12 and verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That's the devil, see. And the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. They overcome that devil by the, by, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And the word of their testimony was the blood of Jesus Christ. That was has cleansed me from all unrighteousness, has delivered me from you, Satan. That's the word of the testimony. Now, the defense... <clears throat> of the natural body is the blood. You know, that, that's, uh, that's a medical record. You know, you always, doctors, you know, a fever in a patient tells the doctor that that patient, that that body is fighting back, that he knows that. If there's fever, he knows that that body, that immune system in there is fighting back. That's what brought this about. Now, when a blood transfusion is given to a human. You know, if you have to take a blood transfusion, it's desired that that patient will have a fever of around 102, 103 degrees. It'll come to there. That means the blood is fighting against any foreign elements that might be in that foreign blood. The doctor told me, I asked the doctor about that. I said, is that right? I'd read it. He said, that's right. He said, any foreign elements, if there is, that blood fights back. That's going to produce a fever, and that's a very good sign that it's doing its job, that we're not something getting by that blood into that body that, that would make the situation worse than it is. You know, there's elements in the blood to fight against every microbian. That's the most amazing thing. You know, every microbian, virus, bacteria, whatever, that comes up against the body. There, there's, there, is, there is those microbians in there. The blood of Je Jesus, then, is the defense of the spiritual body. The blood of Jesus, our defense, our shield, our preservation. The blood will rise against those spiritual diseases that otherwise would destroy us. If, if we're moving with God, the church is moving with God, 
then that blood will raise up against those spiritual diseases that otherwise would bring the church under. You know, I preached a sermon years ago about a diseased body, you know, dealing with the church, that a diseased body cannot function like a healthy body. It just cannot do the things that it ought to do simply because it's enabled by that disease. Well, the blood of Jesus lifts itself against any of those diseases that try to come up in that body. The blood is our covering against that storm. You know, in Luke ten nineteen, lo, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That says there will be attacks. You can be sure. You, you know, that the devil's not going to play dead because you got saved or because we're having church. There, there's going to be attacks. Things will come against us. But if we maintain, this is the secret of life, if we maintain that proper relationship, if we walk in the light, then that blood will not only cleanse, it will protect and preserve us, assures you in this building. But we have to be very careful about our lives. To walk in the light, what would Jesus do? You know, everything of our lives, that's not fanaticism, folks. You know, that's, that's absolute uh, facts of life. Just what would he do and maintain that relationship Then everything is going to be all right. And listen to this, Revelation 12 and 11, and they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb. See, that's our greatest, greatest defense. The blood, you know, first of all, the blood secures the ground. From the vantage point of that blood, <clears throat> we hurl that name of Jesus at the devil. For if I'm walking in the light of God, then that devil's got to cross that blood to get to me. See, that blood secures that ground. Nothing else can. It secures that ground. Now, I, I know you know this, uh, 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 but the cobra is one of the most poisonous snakes known on this planet. India is full of them. You, you travel India, you'll find they, they charm them. They'll raise up, you know, and they got them little flutes, and they charm them. But they're not something to charm, as far as I'm concerned. They're something to kill. You know, they're, they're, they're the most poisonous snake. For centuries, his bite was absolute death. A man bit by that cobra just fixed his coffin. He's gone in a few hours. There's no hope. In India, the government, though, discovered that a certain strain of Belgium horses were immune to the bite of that cobra. They, they found out they could let that snake bite that horse. He never could eat. He'd just flick his tail like a mosquito. It never had no effect on him whatsoever. So they learned that by allowing that horse to be bitten by that snake, then they could take the blood of that horse and produce an antidote that when you were bitten, they got to you with that, you could live. It would immunize the person bitten by that cobra. That, that, that horse's blood would immunize that person. Now, need I remind you that a serpent more poisonous than the cobra has bitten the human race? Oh, no. I, no, death passed on every one of us. There's a poison of venom came that day, unbelievable that passed on every human race. Through the bite of that old serpent, the devil, death passed upon every descendant of Adam. He that sinneth shall die. For thousands and years, death reigned. No hope. This was, this was, there's no antidote. The poison was in the blood. All had to die. But 2,000 years ago, oh, 2,000 years ago, they came one to this planet. Oh, my God. That was immune to the bite of that serpent. Think about it, folks. He was immune to the bite. He knew no sin. He knew no sin. To save the human family from death, that Holy One willfully allowed the serpent to bite him. He who knew no sin became sin, that that blood might become the antidote that would immunize me from that awful, awful serpent's bite of thousands of years ago. Hallelujah. Jesus, in effect, said to Satan, 
inoculate me with the sins of this whole world. And in my death, I will conquer death. In my death, my blood will become an antidote. And though it is written, the soul that sinneth shall die, the soul that receives this antidote shall live. Hallelujah. We live because of that today. We live. There is a fountain filled with blood, flows from Emmanuel's veins. Sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. That blood is secure, the only cure for the deadly leprosy of sin. The holiness of Jesus' blood neutralizes sin, immunizes the sinners, and sinners plunge beneath that flow, lose that stain. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. That's the reason we can live. Oh, my. What a hope. What a blessedness. Hallelujah to God. Another characteristic that human blood is, it bathes every cell in the body in its proper atmosphere. How we need that today. We've got so much block in it, so many different ideas that they let in. But if that blood can flow, see, it'll bring harmony. It'll bring peace. That's what it does. It flows, it does. The bathing action of this blood creates a proper atmosphere so the right relationship is maintained between the cells, thus making for harmony throughout the whole body. See, that Blood is flowing through that body, creating the proper atmosphere for those cells. Now, the blood of Christ does the same thing for the spiritual body of Christ. In the natural, you know, when the metabolism of the physical being is out of balance, strange things begin to happen to that person. We become sick, we become nervous, we become irritable. You know, when, when, uh, when the metabolism gets out of balance... But you correct the imbalance, and that blood then will restore the harmony to that body, and it's feel well again. That's the way it is. While the Bible said, when we sin willfully, when we allow anger, strife, bitterness to remain among us, then the blood of Christ cannot mean the harmony between us, between us, the cells of this body of Christ. You, you, you are angry with somebody across the aisle. You're jealous somebody seems to be doing better with God than you. All this kind of a thing. Then that blood cannot maintain that harmony, that unity. And what that means, God cannot command his life. Pastor dealt with that Sunday night. He cannot, see. But when that unity in that 133rd Psalm was produced in there, God commanded his life. See, he don't take any chances. said, when they're one accord, he said, let light. I mean, Pentecost become a reality. He took no chances for them to get disturbed again. Once they reach that place, well, if you remove all that, you know, then the blood can bring that harmony back to that body. But when we've refused to walk in the light of faith and obedience, then a root of bitterness will spring up in somebody, and he will defile a lot of people. That just can't be alone, you know. Bitterness uh, uh, loves company, I'll tell you. You know, it loves company. And it will defile many. It don't like what's said. It wants somebody else not to like it too. What do you think about the song tonight? Or what do you think about the testimony of Sister Jones? Or, you know, they didn't like it, so they want you not to like it. You know, all of this, all of this is just a process of things. But if you remove that, then that blood will restore that harmony. God will command his life. The community will hear about God. That, that's just how that works. If we confess our sins, the blood will wash away the sin, and the harmony will be restored every time. You know, we, we want to look outside, always want to blame somebody else for our trouble. I didn't have trouble out there. There's nothing they can do. The church needs persecution. I mean, it's in those times it moves out and does its proper work. There's not one thing Washington can do to hurt us. It is when Anana, Nias, and Sapphira show up at an altar in the church that trouble's in the church. You let somebody sit in here with, with envy and anger against another brother or sister in this church, then you've got murder in the church. The Holy Ghost cannot work, and the whole thing is brought down. But if we get rid of that, then... The holy, then the blood will restore that harmony. 
It'll restore it. The metabolism will be right. Everything will be right. Now, when through confession and repentance, you and I clear the way for the blood to flow over every member, the yoke of the enemy is broken. Hallelujah. You can't do that with, with council meetings. You can't do that with, with human schemes. It has to be the life of God. But we've got to deal. What our part of is is to make sure there's nothing in me that hinders that from flowing. Nothing in me. I, I have to examine. If I got ought against my brother, or if my brother's got ought against me, then just leave the gift right here and go talk to him. If what he does with his business. But if he won't listen, that's going to be his problem. But if he, but if I do that, then then we're opening up the way for that harmony to be restored. It's only in that that God commands his life. And life is what it's all about. As each member is bathed by the blood, as that blood is allowed to flow, we lose our jealousies, our backbiting, murmuring, hurt, sensitive feelings. We lose everything now that separates us. As that blood is allowed to flow, as that life is allowed to flow, then all of those things, we begin to see them in the light that God wants us to see them. And everything returns. As we walk in the light and the blood cleanses from all sin, wrong attitudes, we see each other in the perfection of Christ. That, that you know, we, we, we begin to see. We don't see their sins. Love covers a multitude of sin. Don't forgive them, but it covers them. You know, if you want to, you can find wrong with me. I can find wrong with you. But I can see Jesus in you too if I want to. And that's what we must look for. The pure in heart see God. The others see cobwebs. <clears throat> they see somebody tore a songbook or something else. But the pure in heart see God. That's what they come for. And they see God. May not have been the best service ever happened, but they saw God there. So it's the best service any time. If you see God, everything's all right. And the people that go there looking for God, and I'm talking about a real church like here, like brothers, you know, real church where the one thing we want is God. You'll see God there if that's what you're looking for. Hallelujah. When we walk in the light, <coughs> the atmosphere never changes. Think of that. Never changes. The blood goes through every, uh, every, the entire body every 45 to 50 seconds. Now, geography has nothing to do with our attitude. No matter if we're at home, church, work, or play, doesn't matter. The blood will maintain the same atmosphere toward the unsaved, toward the things of the world, the works of the flesh, the works of the devil, and toward things that are righteous and holy. No matter where you're home, school, play, wherever that blood will maintain the same attitude. I'll have the same conviction at home as I have in the altar. I'll have the same on that airplane. That blood will keep everything exactly, I said, exactly like it ought to be. That blood will keep it there all the time as we walk in that light. We can be different in nature. We can be poles apart in ideas, education, talents, but the blood will make up the difference. How wonderful that is. That made up of every kind, all levels of people, from education to things. But the blood makes the difference. Amen. How, that's the most wonderful thing. The harmony that can be brought about by that blood. You know, out there in that world, uh, it's kind of a, uh, everybody gathered to their own, you know. The, the, the educated don't have much to do with us ignorant and this all along the line, this is the way it is. But in here, that blood, that life makes up the difference. All, all are the same because we're all children of God. No big people, no little people in here. Some have more pronounced places to function. But if you didn't function where you function, then this pulpit couldn't function where it's function. It says every one of us fulfill our place. Thank God that we're part of something worthwhile. Then the body functions in harmony and the thing works. Walking in light and obedience of God, we'll have fellowship one with another despite any differences in our personalities. Any difference in our personalities whatsoever. By this shall all men know you're my disciples in that you love one another. 
you know, in love with not. Out there, we pick and choose who we'll love. We want people to think like us, <clears throat> act like us. But in here, in this family, this love of God, love everybody. That's how men, they know, we know him. When the peace, love, and fellowship of the blood of Christ is visible among us, all men will know that because that's sure not out there. I said, that's a world of dog-eat-dog, dog, hatred, all things. So wonderful to come in here out of that. You know, have you ever been just totally, uh, just looks like everything's coming apart? You thought, if I could just get to church, I'm, you know, there's a real church. I'd just get there and sit down, everything would be all right. May not be nobody saying nothing, but just to get there and sit down among the people with this peace of God in that heart. Whatever the blood wishes to remove, you have to let it go. Now, you, can, you can't bicker with that. You can't say to God, well, we have known that person a long time. Or, or you know, that's something I've been doing. And I, no, no, you don't. If it says, let go, let it go. If held on to, listen, if you don't, it will pollute, corrupt, contaminate, and ultimately destroy. And it'll ultimately destroy. When there's conviction, we know it is a blood, life, at work. God deals with you about things in your life. You, you know, all of us have that. We walk with God. Then the message comes, and then God deals with something. We know that blood, the life is at work. Don't hesitate then. Confess, repent, let the blood do its perfect work. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will come to that. But you cannot ignore it. You can't put that off till tomorrow. He said, now is the accepted time. Today is the day. Tomorrow may never happen. You know, there's no, there's no real absolute that you'll be here tomorrow. We may, we may be having to shut down here, uh, hold somebody in this room funeral before that. That's just the way life is. So you don't put off that repentance because you may leave here without it. Do what you know to do when it happens, when God deals with you. If there's a brother you got to deal with not there, God will give you credit. Just tell him, you just let me get the phone. I will do it. God's blessings will come to you. The most horrible of all deaths the doctor told me was a death by hemorrhage, to bleed to death. He said, there's no death so horrible as when you lose blood. Now, when that, you know, medical science says there's no death like that. When we lose blood, every cell then begins to turn in on that other cell. A literal civil war, they say, begins to take place inside of that body. As that blood begins to leave that body, then every cell, millions of them, begin to turn in on each other. Without blood and oxygen, death is certain. So the blood is lost, so is the oxygen and the bloodthirsty, oxygen-hungry cells turn in on each other, you know, for life, for over that little bit of blood that's left. And the entire system then, according to the medical science, is thrown into convulsion as each cell goes to war with the other over the remaining oxygen, and they say the pain is beyond words to describe. This is doubly true spiritually. We fail in the attempt to describe the horror of a human leaving this earth without that blood. We, 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 we don't let ourselves know what that is for that person to die without this blood. A man or a woman slipped through that door called death out there beyond that door is God. He, you, you've dodged him all of your lifetime. You, you, you've overrode the convictions of the message, your mother's prayer, your dad's prayer. You've overrun him. But you walk through that door. He's too high to go over, too big to go around, too deep to go under. You're going to face it now. It's appointed unto man once to die. After this, the judgment. And if you pass through that door called death without this blood, it's an eternity of night, an eternity. When a soul is hungry for God and cannot find that God, that's hell. All that responsibility is the church. I was putting the school in the language of Thailand. I was in Thailand, putting it in the Thai language. Every morning we had to stay in a little hotel. And every morning I'm driving to where the school was 
we were coming, Brother White and I, a whole line of Buddhist monks were out there, 5.30 in the morning collecting offerings. Now imagine that, collecting offerings, people out there. This morning coming, on the way, on that particular morning, there's a Thai lady kneeling down before that devil-possessed priest. Now, I, I saw her, you know, just did a good, we drove by, she kneeling down, she brought him an offering of some kind, and now he's blessing her. Well, I couldn't get that off of my mind. I got in that prayer meeting, I prayed, wrestled with God, that woman was there, and I cried out to God, I said, that woman kneeling there before that devil-possessed priest, and he said to me, that is a devil-possessed priest, but she's not. She's looking for me. And the only reason she's there, in 2,000 years, you haven't told her who I am. The only reason she's out there is because you haven't been out there. You haven't told her who I am. 2,000 years ago, I told you, go into all the world, take this gospel to every creature, but you have not done it. You have not done it. When that soul physically dies without God, that's hell. It's eternal death. Man does not have to die, though, of a spiritual hemorrhage. Thank God, man does not have to die of spiritual starvation. The answer to a natural hemorrhage is a blood transfusion. That's, that's the answer. Now, the answer to a spiritual trans hemorrhage is a is a blood transfusion. The blood of Christ will stop the torment and the torture. We do have the answer. It's the most wonderful thing to see bad men suddenly made good. It is just such a miracle of God to see that happen to me. And I come from that Angola prison. There's never been a worse disgrace on, on this human planet than that. See, that's not the name of that prison. Angola. If the name, it's, it's, a, it's a Louisiana State Prison, but it's called Angola because those 18,000 acres were once, you know, in the slavery times. In slavery times, the Angolians were the largest of the people. They brought more money. So it was just an actual place where they bred humans like they did animals. That's, you know, that's, 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 that's what that was. But in there, you know, in there now, of course, that's past every every race of people on this planet has been slaves to other people sometime or other. Every race, that don't matter. And that's the way it's always been when they were. You know, it's not that you're an exception. No, no, everyone, that's been the thing, how horrible it is. But you know, in there, I had men come to me. See, only 3% ever leave that prison. 97% die there. They got a graveyard there. The family, most of them won't even claim them, that they're there for life. They're there to be executed or, or to a uh, lifetime. But what God has done in there, men, you know, it was kind of funny. Uh, the man that cooked the dinner for me and the, and, and the warden, uh, big, big man, great friend. He loved me instantly. We become friends. He knew me through that school. I ate with him. I was coming back the next Monday. He said, fed you chicken today, but I'm going to catch the fish myself and feed you next Monday. Well, he had killed a woman 26 years ago and had life in prison. Now he's truly born again. He's a cook there for the warden. Find a man you never met in your life. Well, when we left the prison, talking to Brother Ship, pastor friend of mine, and I said, that man in there, the cook, a uh, wonderful man, you say he's been in there 26 years, said, yeah, he killed a woman. He said he poisoned her food. <laughs> I said, you tell me that after we're out of there. <laughs> yeah, I said he poisoned her food. But you know, I have so many, what I'm telling you, come to tell me, you just don't know what God has done for me. You know, they just couldn't thank us enough for being there to tell us. You just can't. Listen, the blood of Christ is the antidote. It's an answer to every single thing that is of God. Everything. Nothing is out of it. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 10 and verse 19. That, that blood, everything. God took in the whole scope. That blood, the Bible said his life, his life is the answer to every, 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 everything. Hallelujah. Thank God. Let's praise the Lord here. 
Amen. Let's worship this great God. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, my. My, my. Thank God for the blood. That blood found me, cleansed me, made it possible for me to be here today. Hallelujah.